Hi, Todd Martin here with The Walking Code. In this video, I'm going to discuss the very important problem of excessive pronation of the feet. This is a problem that is associated with a lot of different medical issues like plantar fasciitis and chronic knee pain. Go ahead and hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I also want to point out to current subscribers that there is a new membership feature on the channel. This allows people to support the channel even more than they already are by clicking on the join button and becoming a member. This is going to give you access to perks that nobody else has. It's a really great feature and I hope you take advantage of it if you enjoy being on this channel and viewing this content. Pronation of the foot occurs when the foot rolls inward, flattening out the arch. This is a part of normal walking and normal standing to a certain degree, but a lot of people suffer from excessive pronation where the foot really turns inward an excessive amount, really flattening out the arch. Now the arch has muscles in the foot that help keep it elevated. You can see me activating those muscles here to keep the arch up. And the arch also has a plantar fascia, which is connective tissue that runs from the front of the foot down to the back of the foot, connecting and wrapping around the heel bone. And that also helps support the structure of the arch. When we put too much pronation on the foot, causing it to flatten out, either by weak muscles or by the way we walk, we put excessive stress on the plantar fascia, stretching it out, and then that causes it to pull or tug against the heel bone, which results in micro tears and inflammation called plantar fasciitis. That is a really common problem that people get that causes heel pain, usually worse when you first wake up in the morning, as plantar fasciitis gets worse, people end up with chronic pain that occurs all the time when they're walking. So it is a really common problem. One of the other issues that happens with excessive pronation of the foot is you can see my knee, which is lined up over the ankle. If the foot hyperpronates, it turns the knee inward. So now it's no longer aligned with my ankle. And as I put weight on it, the weight is going to be excessive on the medial part or the inside part of the knee instead of being evenly distributed between both sides. You can see why this would result in wearing out of the inside part of the joint and leading to arthritis, which in the knee is much more common on the inside part of the joint, primarily due to people who have excessive pronation of the foot. When most people discuss excessive pronation of the foot, they focus on the foot itself and weakness in the muscles of the foot which may cause the arch to collapse or genetically flat feet or other things intrinsic to the foot that are causing the problem. In the walking code, what I like people to do is be aware of the mechanics of what they're doing with their core when they're walking that I believe are really the most impactful component of what's going on when the feet are excessively pronating. Let me show you what's going on during the normal step. When we do a normal step, we place the heel down and then we transfer weight. This is called the loading response phase of a step. The transfer of the weight is the most critical portion of that step in order to transfer the weight in a smooth, low impact, aligned fashion that puts the weight evenly distributed throughout the leg, the knee, and the foot, not putting too much extra stress on the inside portion of the foot that excess stress that will cause the foot to pronate because of the weight that's on it. When I transfer weight to that foot, what I'm doing is I'm tucking my pelvis on the left side to transfer weight. At the time when my heel hits the ground, the root or my tucking of the pelvis is going to be on the side of my right leg. At that time, when the heel hits, I'm going to transfer the weight to my forward foot by tucking the pelvis on the left and releasing the pelvis on the right. 
Why is this so important? It's because this action is done by the rotation of the lower abdominal muscles. My lower abdominal muscles on the left rotate my lumbar spine and pelvis to the left and at the same time tuck the pelvis on the left. My lower abdominal muscles on the right rotate my lumbar spine and pelvis to the right and at the same time tuck the pelvis on the right. So when I touch down with my left heel and my weight is on the right, my lower abdominal muscles are activated on the right side, turning my pelvis to the right and tucking the pelvis on the right. So my spine is vertical and aligned, my weight and root is on the right leg, and my right knee, which has the weight on it, is lined up nicely over my right ankle. When I transfer weight to the front leg, what I need to do is change the rotation of my lower abdominal muscles from the right to the left. That is gonna cause my pelvis to rotate to the left and tuck my pelvis on the left, keeping my spine vertically aligned as the weight shifts forward. From a side view, when I'm standing here with my weight on my right leg, and this is not the normal position for a walk, which would be a little bit farther forward, but in order for me to stop and talk about this, I'm just gonna place my weight back here, but with the same sort of core energy, I'm gonna have my tucking of the pelvis engaged on the right side, so my pelvis is turned to the right. As I change weight to the front leg, I'm going to change the rotation of my lower abs from the right to the left, which is gonna rotate the pelvis to the left and tuck the pelvis on the left. So now, by the time I've fully shifted weight, my forefoot is fully flattened on the ground, my pelvis is now turning towards the left, and that is gonna line my knee up over my ankle. And that's also going to keep my foot energy in a evenly distributed fashion, so it's not coming over the medial portion of the foot, flattening it out. If I have the weight evenly distributed, my foot will be evenly weighted. As I put too much energy onto the inside, it's gonna cause the foot to flatten. That's the hyperpronation. Now we can see what happens with the motion of the pelvis or the rotation of the pelvis. If I rotate my pelvis to the right, you can see the effect that it has on the knee and that knee is reflecting where my weight is. So you can see as the pelvis rotates to the right, my knee buckles inward and that energy or weight is going down into the inside of my foot also. If I back up, as I turn my pelvis to the right, the knee comes inward, the weight comes onto the inside portion of the foot. That's what's happening if my lower abs are oriented to the right as I change weight to my left leg, even if I shift forward, but my weight is rooted to the right leg or the rear leg, my knee is going to be inverted inward here where the stress is on the inside of the knee and the inside of the ankle and the inside of the foot collapsing the arch. What I need to do to line this up has little to do with the foot itself. It has to do with the rotation of my pelvis using my lower abs. When I activate my lower abs turning the pelvis to the left, you can see how my knee went from here to here. Now my knee is lined up over the ankle. This seems simple, but it is an issue that occurs with a lot of people who don't walk correctly. What happens in a variety of different abnormal walking styles, the root stays on the rear leg too long. One of those problems is when people lean forward. And when you lean forward, you end up pushing off the rear leg to take a step. And now what I've done is crashed, not only crashed into the heel, but I've landed my full foot on the ground with my root still on my back leg and I'm pushing back with my right hip. And now my pelvis is still connected or rooted on that right leg. 
and my foot is flat, so I have weight on it because I'm leaning over it, but that pelvic rotation is causing my knee to be inwardly oriented, and that weight is going to be over the inside of my foot, collapsing the arch and stressing out the plantar fascia. Again, what happens is I push, my root is on the back leg, my knee is inverted. My root should be on the front leg, which is gonna line my knee up over the ankle. Another very common gait problem that people have that leads to excessive pronation of the foot is the duck-footed walk. This is probably one of the most common walking problems that people have these days, particularly associated, in my opinion, with people who are wearing flip-flops a lot. What happens with the duck-footed walk is people keep their weight on the rear leg as they change weight, or they really don't change weight, they shift the body forward, and then they flex the rear hip and change the root to the standing leg or the forward leg at the last minute and step through like this. And then they shift forward, keeping the root on the rear leg, and then change the root as they swing the leg forward. And they walk in that sort of fashion. The problem is the weight is shifted forward while the root is still on the rear leg, and then we swing through, and my spine, you can see, is still centered between the two feet. I haven't gotten lined up where my whole body weight is evenly distributed over my hip and my knee and my foot of the standing leg like we do in a normal walk. In the duck-footed walk, my spine stays pretty much in between the two feet the whole time. Therefore, my weight is to the inside of the knee and the inside of the foot. And this, with each step, is gonna cause excess stress on the inside of the knee, and it's going to cause excess stress on the ankle and the plantar fascia, flattening it out. And you might not notice this initially, or even for years, but as you take thousands and hundreds of thousands of steps like this, over time, those structures, the connective tissues, the joint cartilage, all of that begins to wear down and wear out, and then that can lead to permanent structural damage. It may be that people who do that temporarily get plantar fasciitis, and the symptoms resolve after a while as the body tries to heal itself, but eventually the body cannot heal. As a physician, what we normally do when we see somebody with plantar fasciitis is first prescribe an arch support, which is really a crutch if you think about it. It's really forcing the foot to go back into the normal position, even though somebody's trying to jam it this way, the arch support's trying to push it back in the other direction to prevent the arch from collapsing. But it's really a crutch and not a fix for the problem. A lot of people who have really bad plantar fasciitis say they can't wear the arch supports because the arch support itself is so painful. But that's because they're jamming their weight into the arch support instead of having the weight evenly distributed. The reason we have to use arch supports is because it's not that easy to just tell a person to fix the way they're walking while we're sitting there in a 20 minute office visit. So we give them a crutch and some stretches to do so they can stretch out the plantar fascia so it's not tight. And that is a couple of the things that we can do to help. But I believe that the real fix for the problem is fixing the gait abnormalities that are causing the excessive weight to be on the inside of the leg and the inside of the foot rather than lined up correctly. So when you're walking, make sure that as soon as your heel places, you're activating your lower abs to tuck and pull the body forward, keeping the knee aligned. As I said, if your rear leg is rooted, you can see how that immediately pushes my knee to the inside and my weight to the inside of the ankle and the plantar fascia in the foot. This also applies when you're walking upstairs and walking uphill. When you're walking uphill, there is a portion of the step where you will rise and then push forward as you're going up the hill, but as you're going to change weight to the front foot, before it gets to the flat position, even though I'm pushing with my rear leg, hip, as I'm going uphill, 
I still need to tuck the pelvis on the side of the standing leg as I am lowering the forefoot. I do not ever want to have the weight rooted on my rear leg as my forefoot is brought down with the weight over it because that's what's gonna turn the knee inward. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have a great day.